characteristics of a network stream and established a network stream connection. By the end of this module, you will be able to transfer buffer data over the network using a network stream. Okay, so let's talk about the overall programming flow of using network streams. Notice uh, we have computer 1, which is an RT target, and a computer 2, which is a host computer in this graphic. Uh, what we'll do is first we have to create the endpoints. So we're going to create a writer endpoint, and we're going to create a reader endpoint. And then they're going to establish a connection with each other. After that, we'll move on to uh, the main portion of our program where where RT target is writing elements to the network stream and the host computer at the bottom is reading elements from the network stream. And then at some point we're, we're going to stop writing elements and then we're going to flush the stream. So essentially we're going to send all the remaining elements that we've written to the network stream and make sure they get sent up to the host or to send up to the reader. And then we're going to uh, finish reading all those elements on the host computer in this case and then we're going to destroy the stream on both ends. Okay, so when you first create your writer endpoints and reader endpoints, one other thing that you should do is configure the buffer sizes. Notice that on both of these endpoint functions, there is a place where you can either configure the size of the writer buffer size or the reader buffer size. So if you take a look at the graphic at the very bottom, notice that in this overall graphic that shows how a network stream works, there is a portion for write buffer and a portion for read buffer. And you see the corresponding function and uh, input to that function right above it. So make sure you configure the writer buffer size and a reader buffer size before going on. Okay, so let's take a look at the writer endpoint. So what function could you use to write data to your network stream from your writer endpoint? Uh, one function you can use is write single element to stream. So notice if you do that, uh, you're going to be able to write data by wiring data into the data in input. On this particular screenshot, it's a black dashed line, which means it hadn't been defined. But remember, when you create your writer endpoint, you have to put a data type that's associated with it. So whatever data type you associate with that network stream, that's the data type that you can wire into the write single element to stream function. Notice you can also set a timeout to monitor how long it's going to wait for it to try to have room in the FIFO or to have room in the network stream to write an element into the network stream. The default value is negative 1, which means uh, it's going to wait, wait forever until there's a space that's free in the network stream. Notice you can also monitor the timed out status over there on the right. So you can also write multiple elements to a stream if you want. And if you want to do that, you would use the function that's shown on the slide. In this case, you can write an array of elements to the data in terminal. You can also uh, use functions on the reader endpoint side to read elements from the network stream. So in this case, if you want to read one element at a time, you could use the read single element from stream function. Notice here you can set a timeout as well. Uh, by default, if you don't set that, uh, the default timeout is negative one, which means the function is going to wait indefinitely for an element to be available on the network stream. Notice you can also monitor the timed out status as well, and you can see that as one of the outputs of this function. You can also read multiple elements at the same time. So if you're using this function, the read multiple elements from stream function, you will actually be reading an array of data coming out of the data out terminal. To specify how many elements to read, uh, you would specify something in the number of elements input. So you see that at the very top over there on the left. One thing to note, this function will return an error if number of elements is greater than the read buffer size that you set with the uh, create network stream reader endpoint function earlier. So make sure that number of elements is going to be something that's smaller than whatever you set the read buffer size to. There's also a network streams property node that you can place down. And this is a way that you can access other properties of your network stream. So for example, using this property node, you can also access the available elements for writing, also the available elements for reading. You can also see what the, the current buffer size is. You can see whether the endpoints are, are connected or not, and things like that. So these properties are a great way to monitor the status of your network stream. So now let's talk about the flush stream function. So what this function will do is it will transfer all the data from your writer endpoint to your reader endpoint before data flow resumes. So this function is something that's going to be called from the writer endpoint. 
So for the flush stream function, let's talk about the weight condition input real quick. So the default weight condition input, so you notice that that's an input over there shown on the bottom of the screen. The default is going to be all elements read from stream. If you choose this option, then this is how the data flow is going to work. The data flow is going to resume when all data has been transferred to the reader and the reader has finished reading the data. So just to kind of talk through this again, let's say you're on your writer endpoint and then you've written a bunch of data and then you're done. Okay, so um, at that point you want to flush the stream to make sure all the data that you've written to the network stream gets to the reader. And if we have that all elements read from stream set as our weight condition on this function, this function, uh, the data flow is going to stay at this function and this function is not going to finish executing until all the data has been transferred to the reader and the reader has actually read out that data. And once the reader has finished reading all that data out, then the flush stream function is going to finish executing and resume data flow. To contrast this, uh, there's another weight condition that you can set it to. So if you set the weight condition to all elements available for reading, so that second bullet over there, then data flow on the flush stream function will resume as soon as all data has been transferred to the reader. Okay, so the difference here is as soon as all the data has been transferred from the writer to the reader, then this flush stream function will finish executing and resume data flow, and then um, it's not going to wait for all those elements to actually be read on the reader side. So again, this function also has a timeout, so the timeout determines how long this function will wait for that particular wait condition to complete. So the last function that you would call both on the writer and on the reader end is the destroy stream endpoint function. As a best practice, uh, when you're done using a network stream, you need to destroy the stream on both the reader and the writer endpoints. That way it'll completely destroy the stream and free up the memory allocated to that stream. And just as a note, remember before you destroy the stream, you want to make sure that you use the flush stream function on the writer endpoint first to ensure that you don't lose any data. If you use the flush stream, you are going to ensure that the writer endpoint is able to flush and send all the data that is collected and make sure that it gets sent to the reader endpoint before you destroy that endpoint. So the main point of this slide is network stream functions are non-deterministic. So network stream functions, they're going to be functions that communicate over the network. So inherently that's going to be non-deterministic because um, when you're communicating over the network, there could be you know, network delays and things like that that slow things down. So you wouldn't want to use any network stream functions inside a deterministic loop. So that's why you should always see the network streams inside a non-deterministic loop. So if you look at this particular example, notice that on our RT target, uh, we're using network streams. In our deterministic loop, we don't have any of those functions, right? In the deterministic loop, we have uh, functions that need to happen deterministically. So for example, maybe a control algorithm or something like that. In this case, we just have some sample code that's generating data. Um, and then we, if we look at the top loop, the non-deterministic loop, that's where we see our network streams functions. Okay, So notice that's where we're writing elements to the stream. On this slide, we see an example of the order of execution with a network streams program. So at the bottom, we see the block diagram for our RT target, which is our writer endpoint. And at the top, we see a block diagram for our host computer, which is our reader endpoint. So notice we've created the endpoints on both ends. We've set the buffer sizes on both ends as well. So let's take a look at number one. So let's say uh, we do number one. We have created a network stream writer endpoint on our RT target, and uh, we've given it a name of my writer. So at this point, it's going to just sit there and wait for a reader endpoint to connect to it. So let's go now to number two at the top. So now on our host computer, we've created a reader endpoint, and we've given it a name of my reader, and we also have a writer URL input. Okay, so let's say the writer URL input looks something like slash slash the IP address of our RT target slash my writer. So at that point, then the reader endpoint will establish a connection with the writer endpoint, and now we have a network stream that's been created. So now we're going to go ahead and enter into the main portion of both, both block diagrams. So on our RT target, let's go to number three. This is where we are writing in our non-deterministic loop to our network stream. Okay, so here we're just going to keep writing a single element to the stream each time. And then let's go to the top there. So on our reader, we are, in this case, we're reading multiple elements from the stream at a time. And then in this particular program, at some point, 
the host computer is going to hit the stop generation button. So you see on number five, it's going to hit the stop generation button, which is going to stop the generation on our RT target. So let's jump down to our bottom diagram. Let's say we've stopped generation on our RT target, and in, in this case, there's some code behind the scenes that once that happens, it also stops writing um, elements to our stream. So let's say we exit out of that while loop on the RT target, and then the next thing that's going to happen is number six. So on number six, after we've exited out of the writing loop, we're going to flush the stream. And in this case, the wait condition is all elements read from stream. Okay, so in this case, at number six, we're going to flush the stream. It's going to send all the data on our writing end and send it all the way up to our reader endpoint. So now we're going to go up to our host computer at, at the top. And at number four, notice that it's at the read multiple elements from stream. It's going to send all those elements up to my reader. And then it's going to wait till the reader has read every single element from that stream. And then once that has happened, we're going to jump back down to number six and the flush stream function is going to be able to finish executing and data flow is going to resume. At that point, it's going to destroy the stream endpoint at number seven, and that's going to cause the read multiple elements from stream at the top over there to have an error, which is going to exit that top loop, and then the top loop is also going to destroy the stream endpoint. So this is just an example of how this was implemented in this particular block diagram. There are other ways of implementing it as well. Maybe you can have a more graceful way to destroy your endpoint instead of causing an error. So at this point, this is a good time to do exercise 6.3. And in this exercise, you'll create a network stream that is able to stream buffer data from the RT target to the host computer uh, using network streams. So you'll create an application that's similar to the ones that you've seen in the slides. And if you want, you can also take a look at the module that's associated with the solution for exercise 6.3 and I'll do a walkthrough of that exercise there. Now you can transfer buffer data over the network using a network stream. Next, we will use standard protocols for network communication.